Nyayo car project, as it was known, died without many Kenyans understanding what had precipitated its sudden death. However, insiders say that the project was doomed because it lacked the commitment of those in the same government that launched it, as Faisal Ahmed now reports. The Nyayo car project was spearheaded by President Moy, who was inspired by Singapore, which had built its home span car, the Proton, in 1985. Rugged, made for hard work. The only cars available in the Kenyan market back then were mostly products from either Japan or Europe. According to sources, the president was not fond of the foreign cars. So he instructed the University of Nairobi's civil engineering department to make a car that Kenya would call its own. When he came to the University of Nairobi, he challenged the university and said he would like the university uh, to come up with a, a car, however ugly, however slow. Those were the specifications. And I was the dean at that time, the dean of engineering. So we took it seriously as academics. The memo was given that um, Zemoy wanted a vehicle built in Kenya locally. He meant every component of the vehicle had to be built locally. Now what the engineers did was source material locally. Now these panels were built here in the numerical machining complex. The wheels on this vehicle were built in Karyobangi, and as you can see, they are period correct from the 80s, cast iron wheels. Now, to the 1.5 liter engine here, every single component of this engine was built locally, aside from this carburetor, which was not built locally, as they did not have the technology to build a carburetor back then. You see a car, it's a, a kind of symbol of the state of a nation in terms of manufacturing so if you want to really go into real industrial manufacturing a car is one of the products that you need really you can really use uh, to to show or to portray the level of industrial development yes so it was a challenge then oh, by then the former president moy yeah, for Kenyans more so University of Nairobi yes to make a Kenyan car and of course they came together University of Nairobi Railways Department of Defense Polytechnic there are various agencies that came together to see if they could uh, attempt to produce a Kenyan car According to Engineer Onyango, the main challenge when building the Nyayo car was to build a car that Kenyans would buy despite the market being saturated by well-established European and Japanese cars that had a proven track record. We had a plan with the developers and ourselves we had promised the government that uh, we can deliver a Kenyan car in three years. So by 1990, we were able to deliver two cars and one pickup. You know, what we did was to do research in the movie. We went out, bought two cars, one Japanese, one British. Cut the cars into pieces. And we were able now to see what constituted whatever they had. Uh, I put it in one way, you see, something which has been done before there are ways and means of doing it you know the vehicle actually moved but there are these jokes people make that it was too heavy even when with the driver that could not develop enough power to move a vehicle of course the engine the being the prime mover if you give him too heavy load then it should not be efficient uh, the engine was struggling to move the vehicle itself because there's an aspect of materials for manufacture, especially for the vehicle. You see the current the type of vehicles that are being done now. There's a lot of replacement of light materials, plastics and aluminium coming in to reduce the weight. And so to create positive impact on the power developed by the engine to perform the intended purpose, not just to move the body of the vehicle. The Ayo Pioneer was done with ordinary materials. Materials that are, you know, 
when you come to the vehicle production you have to define the various materials that you you need to apply Halfway into the design of the cars, Professor Francis Gishanga, who was the lead in the project, and his team from the Department of Engineering had begun designing the Nyayo car. But halfway through, they had encountered a hurdle. Now, the death of the Nyayo car can be traced back to a lot of issues, key among them being financial constraints and government interference. And speaking of government interference, it is said that then Minister Nicholas Biwot heard that there was a project to make a Kenyan car. However, he was not involved in this. But when he got wind of it and where it was being made, he went to see what was being done. And this was the second Nyayo car that was being made at the time. However, he said he did not agree with the concept and he wanted his own take on the Nyayo car. Hence, the Nyayo 4 and 3 pickups. He said that this would be more economical and more appealing to Kenyans. However, during the um, revealing of these two vehicles, this particular pickup did not start. Hence, he was disappointed in the whole project and banished it altogether. The vehicle Pioneer is a complete vehicle by definition. If you describe it, it has wheels, it has an engine, it has a gearbox, it has a steering, it has all everything that a vehicle has. But are they the right items for it? Which means it can be done if we approach it in the right way. Yeah. Those understandings were then missing. So in doing Nyayo Pioneer first level, there's a lot that required to be done. One key element that was omitted was to disregard the experience of this person who cannot write, but is very good on machining. Because then they understand, they understand various shapes when you do machining, finishing and all that. Because in vehicle application, the knowledge in material processing is very crucial. Even the surface finish of a material itself is very crucial. So it brings in a lot of things, you know, the type of tools you require, the speed at which you run the machine and all that, and then the treatment thereafter. Those are understood very well by the people in the application field. But, you know, the drive was then by the university. The university really basically is theoretical. Yeah, so that disconnect brought a lot of uh, no problems in that vehicle. Many, including the pioneers of the project, believe that if Nyayo 1 was successful, Kenya would be on the map as one of the countries in Africa that produces cars. Uh, then I thought it was issues to do with, the, you know, it's a major project was coming. It was going to be billions of shillings. Eh? And so, uh, of course, I know the people who later on interacted with me. Places like that, people want to have some kind of leverage to eat. Yes. Uh, but that was not my style. Three decades later, the project that was set to read the market of foreign cars failed, leaving many to wonder what it would have been like if the Nyayo Pioneer project had been successful. Faisal Ahmed, Citizen TV, Nairobi.